Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is a mini lesson on engaging in argumentation from evidence, level one, constructing argument. The icon for uh, a argumentation is two people talking to each other, and they're not in an argument fighting per se, but they are presenting evidence around a question. So the first thing you want to agree on if you are ever doing argumentation is what are the question that we are really trying to construct an argument for? So developing the question first will always be the first step. But then when you have an argument, what you're going to have is basically an answer to the question. And so as I go through teaching argumentation, I always like to start with the evidence. So we look at the evidence first. And then we carefully evaluate the evidence. Is this all the evidence do we need? Or do we need any more evidence? And then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna make a claim. And then you're gonna include reasoning. So a proper argument will always be in this direction. Claim, evidence, and reasoning. But the order in which you develop it, I like to start with the evidence and I'll show you that. After watching this video, you should be able to create an argument around a question like, are all metals magnetic or is this a reversible or a non-reversible change? I'm gonna start by just doing a quick argument around these eggs and trying to determine are they raw or hard boiled or not. And then you're gonna have a chance to do that as you look at these different shapes and try to determine if they're a rhombus or not. And so let me clean this up and then we'll get started. Okay, so for this first argument, we've got two eggs. I can, as I feel them, they're cold. They just came out of the refrigerator. And so we call this egg A and egg B. And so you can kind of, based in the words that are over here, can try to figure out what the question's going to be. But let me write it down. Okay, so for the question that we're trying to answer is, are eggs A and B raw? Are they hard boiled? Is one raw, the other one hard boiled or vice versa? And so when you're doing an argument, you always wanna make sure that the question and the answer to the question is not always clear. And so that's the reason we do an argument is because we wanna figure out which of these it is. Is it raw or is it hard boiled? And so the first thing that I always do when I'm looking at an argument is I start to construct some evidence or I start to develop some evidence. So let me write some of the evidence that I notice as we kind of uh, look at the eggs and observe the eggs. Okay, so as I look at the first evidence that I have, egg A, which is this egg right here, is smooth. It's got a smooth surface, it's white, and then it's cold. So that might be good evidence, and both of them are the same. That might be good evidence of like where were the eggs? Were they in a refrigerator before we looked at them? But so far, I don't see any difference between the two. So let me try to find a difference between the two. I think one thing I'm starting to notice is the way that they spin is different. A just keeps spinning. So let me write that down as additional evidence. Okay, so now I'm starting to notice a difference. When I spin A, it just keeps spinning smoothly, but B kind of has a, a wobbly spin. If I stop A, it just stops. But if I stop B, it just keeps going. So let me do that again. So if I stop A, it just stops. But if I stop B, it just keeps going again. So I think that'd be additional evidence. So now I've got some difference between the two. The next thing I wanna do is I really want to, in an argument, I want to evaluate the evidence. I wanna look at the evidence. And so what I'm starting to see right here is that A and B, there's a difference between these two. And so this evidence, this first evidence, doesn't really help me out because that's exactly the same. So if they were both the same egg, then I think that would be helpful. So I might get rid of this evidence as I evaluate the evidence. The next thing you should always do when you're trying to write an argument is you wanna look at the words that are found in the question. So as I write the argument, I really wanna look at the words that are included in the question, and those are raw and hard boiled. And so if I look at the definition for a raw egg, it's an uncooked egg that is still in the shell uh, with the egg white and the yolk remaining liquid. And then if it's a hard boiled egg, the egg has been boiled until both the egg and the white are completely solidified. 
And so when I look at this definition, this will be really important, especially when we do the reasoning, I'm starting to think of some additional evidence that I might want to gather. And so if I really want to see if it's a liquid or, liquid or a solid on the inside, maybe I could use like a flashlight. And so what I'm going to do is just shine the flashlight through this egg, so egg A. And what I'm seeing is it's really dark on the side. So as we look at A, not much of that light is passing through. And then if we look at B, let's see how that's different. I don't know if you can pick that up, but it's almost glowing. So the egg is glowing on B. So I think that'd be good evidence as far as what's inside as well. So let me write that down. Okay, now I can get rid of the eggs. I think I have enough evidence from this. And so I'm going to get those out of the way. And so I'm just going to write down my evidence here. I've, I've done some evaluation. First thing I'm going to do is just separate these. So let's go egg A there and egg B here. I think I'm ready to, at this point, I think I'm ready to make a claim. So what is a claim? A claim is simply an answer to the question. So when you're making a claim, all you're doing is based on the evidence that you've gathered and you've evaluated, you're just going to answer the question. So let me write my claim down. Okay, so for my claim, what I'm saying is egg A, I think, is a hard-boiled egg. So I think it looks like this on the inside, and I think egg B is a raw egg. So I think it's got liquid on the inside. So claim is just an answer to the question. I've got some evidence. You can see that this two bits of ev evidence goes with this claim. But what's the last thing I have to do in an argument is I have to come up with some reasoning. So what is reasoning as we think about reasoning? Reasoning is, if I just show you, Reasoning is really a logical connection. So you're logically trying to connect that claim to the evidence. And so if I were to write down what that reasoning is, and let me put it kind of in order. Okay, as I walk through my reasoning, what I'm saying for egg A is that it's hard boiled and the reason it spins smoothly is, and a way to think about reasoning is this evidence is important or tells me this because it shows that the inside is solid. It's attached to the shell on the inside and that's why it spins really nicely. And when I stop it, it doesn't keep spinning because it's connected to the shell. I also think that the solid uh, white and the, the yolk block the light. And so that's another reason why I think it's solid on the inside. Just like trying to shine a light through your hand, the solid parts of your hand, which is your hand, is going to block the light. And so this is my reasoning. As we look at the egg B, I think the reason that B is wobbly is because the liquid keeps moving on the inside. And so it's not attached to the shell, so it keeps moving. And then I'm pretty sure that a liquid can allow light to move through. And so that's why I think B is a raw egg and A is a hard boiled egg. Now, when you actually give an argument, you read it from left to right. So if I were to read this in a statement, I would say, Egg A is hard boiled, it's sp it spins smoothly, that tells me that the inside is solid. It also appears dark in front of a light, that tells me that it's a solid on the inside. So a written argument is always claim evidence reasoning, but it's not the order in which you gather it. And so now that you've seen how I develop a argument with all the elements of it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this up and then I'll get some other uh, question that you can answer on your own. Okay, for the next one, we have these four shapes here, and I'm giving you the question. The question is, is each of these shapes a rhombus? And if you don't know what a rhombus is, we could just look at the definition of a rhombus. It's a quadrilateral whose four sides all have the same length. So what I would encourage you to do is just pause the video, try to construct an argument with claim, evidence, and reasoning for each of these four shapes, unpause the video, and then come back.
Okay, so uh, a lot of the time you just see a question and you want to jump right to a claim, but this is not a geometry mini lesson or about shapes. What we're doing is just trying to have a mini lesson about how to make a claim with evidence and reasoning. So let me just go through a natural progression. What I would do is just start to gather evidence on each of these four shapes. So let me write down some evidence on each of these. Okay, so I've written some evidence for each of these shapes. Some of this evidence will be helpful and some of it won't be helpful. I said this is yellow color, six sides, equal length sides, and I think this is called a hexagon. This is blue with four sides, equally length sides, and it's a diamond. This is a red color, has different length sides. It's got four sides to it, and I don't remember what this is called. And this has orange color, four sides, equal length sides, and it's a square. So this is the evidence that I'm just kind of pulling. Um, but the next thing I want to do is I want to evaluate that evidence. So once you look at the evidence, we want to go through and evaluate all that evidence. Remember, a really good way to evaluate evidence would be to look at the definition. So we're going to look at the definition of a rhombus, and a rhombus is a quadrilateral whose four sides all have the same length. So I have to know that all sides have similar length or same length, but I might not know what a quadrilateral is. And so I could get a definition for that. So a quadrilateral is going to be a four-sided polygon, but maybe I don't know what a polygon is. And so a polygon is going to be a closed figure made up of straight lines. Okay, so now I think I know what a rhombus is. And so now I'm gonna go through all the evidence that I have, and I'm going to get rid of evidence that's not gonna be helpful. So the color doesn't help me, so I could get rid of that evidence. If the definition for a rhombus were it had to be yellow, that would be helpful evidence. What else is not helpful evidence? The name of it. So if this is a hexagon, that doesn't really help me as well. Or a diamond. I think this is pretty good. Or even the name square. So what I'm saving as far as evidence goes is I'm going to save evidence that's really tied to the definition of the number of sides that it has and also the lengths of those sides. And so now I think I'm ready to make a claim. So let me make a claim here. Okay, so the claims I've made is that this is not a rhombus and this is not a rhombus, but I think this and this are a rhombus. Remember, a claim is simply an answer to the question. Now, I'm almost there. Last thing I have to do is I have to write proper reasoning. And so as I'm thinking about reasoning, sometimes as I think about reasoning, I may have to even get rid of some more of this evidence. And so let me write reasoning for the first one. So I'm saying this is not a rhombus, and that's because a rhombus from the definition only has four sides. And since this has six sides, then it's not a rhombus. And so I don't really need this evidence as well. The equal side length, I don't need the hexagon evidence, I only need the six side evidence. Because once it has six sides, it violates the definition of a rhombus, which has four sides, and so it's not a rhombus. So let me write reasoning for the other shapes. Okay, for the two that are a rhombus, what I said is essentially the definition. Since a rhombus has four equal length sides, and this shape has equal length sides, and it has four sides, oops, there's a mistake. So let me try that again. <laughs> So the reason that these are both a rhombus is I'm giving you the definition of a rhombus. So a rhombus has four equal length sides. Since this shape, the blue one, has four sides and their equal length 
it is a rhombus. Same thing with the square. And the evidence that I have is it has four sides and they're equal length sides. That fits the definition. Why is this not a rhombus? It has different length sides. So this is longer than that. And a rhombus has to have equal length sides. And so I'm using the definition in my reasoning. So if I were to write this out just as a statement, yellow is not a rhombus. It has six sides, but a rhombus has to only have four sides according to the definition. So this is not a rhombus. And so hopefully you're kind of reading it from left to right. Or the next one, uh, this shape is a rhombus. It has four sides that are equal length. A rhombus has four equal length sides according to its definition. So this is a rhombus. And so when you're writing a argument, it goes in this order from claim to evidence and reasoning, but you wanna make sure that when it's done, or as we gather it, we first look at all the evidence before we start to make claims. And so this has taken us a little while, but hopefully you're getting better at constructing an argument. What I'd encourage you to do now is I have a couple of other examples down below. So you could look at some of the data on, I got a video on metals and are all metals magnetic? So you could construct an argument for that. You could also construct an argument for this. Are they, uh, is this a, a reversible or non-reversible change? But the key thing when you're coming up with an argument is we always have a question that we don't know the answer to we're going to answer it which is with our claim we've got evidence which is what we observe and then our reasoning is a logical connection between the two and i hope that's helpful